the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, it's the Nikki Glazer podcast. Billy is a sex slave. I'm Nikki Glazer. I am in Los Angeles, California, in a very special studio. Is this is this the official iHeart podcast studio, or like where a lot of iHeart radio podcasts? Are made? I think it is, even it's though I didn't see any signs. Yeah, but it's, we're getting our parking. Yeah, don't validated. even try to find us because there are no signs that would <laughs> yeah. indicate that this is the building. But this is a sweet ass studio that we get to take advantage of today because Noah is here in Los Angeles. We are together. Look, we can hold hands during the podcast. Aww. Oh, I feel so close to you. So what a treat! Noah and I are together in Los Angeles at this dope ass studio. Make sure you watch the video online when it's up in a couple days on our uh, YouTube channel. And then uh, Anya is, is here in New York. She's still long in the tooth over there. And the, <laughs> she's still she's still got her new teeth in. Until tomorrow. Until and tomorrow. Slightly shorter in the tooth. What? So they're going to give you your permanent <laughs> ones tomorrow? Slightly shorter. Slightly shorter in the tooth. Yeah. Uh, they're going to give me, they're going to adjust these and then I... And that's again, the final adjustment. And then I wait for three weeks to get the final. But I got three a lot weeks. of good info. What, what do you mean? I'll fill you in later on Veneer Corner or whenever you're ready. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, our new segment called Veneer Corner. <laughs> um, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Veneerly there. Um, <laughs> wait. I love it. Just fill us in now. First okay. of all, for people wanting to get veneers, Anya did not. Anya did her own research because even Carlisle last night, who is on our girls chat, was like, I wish, I wish Anya would have told me. I have so much to tell her. Like, don't do it. Because Carlos, they have to be replaced every 10 years. Much like um, breast implants, which you don't hear about. Doctors are just trying to sell you on these things. So when you go, when I got LASIK, they didn't tell me about the weird nearsighted thing where it was like, you might have, if you get both done, you'll be able to, you'll have readers sooner. None of this stuff. They want to just get you in and get you out and get you sold. They don't tell you that you're not gonna be able to bite your fingernails anymore if you <gasps> get veneers. That's the big, that's the doozy for me. Yeah. Like I've if been, I have I've, a hangnail, I just want to clip it. I just want to get it and like rip it. And you can't get any grip with those front teeth, right? To me, the most, yeah, the most, also, they adjusted my bite, like, without me asking, so they're like, we made your teeth more correct, and I'm like, they go, they cover your bottom teeth. I'm like, I don't want them covering my bottom <gasps> teeth, because now it's so hard to talk, so get, who gives a shit if you they cover You didn't think your- about this at all as, a, as someone who talks and sings for a living, yeah. you didn't I, think about any of this? I thought about it, I researched it, and I did not, but I didn't research nearly enough. I should have sat down with them longer and just done a full-on interview they make it seem like uh yeah you could just do this and then you'll have these permanent i wouldn't even ask them because even when i've asked the hard questions at the lasik place which i'm so glad i did it they were still like it's not just sign the box it's not a big deal everyone does this we've done ninety seven thousand surgeries it's like everyone doesn't and i'm so grateful i did it because i wake up in the morning and i can like see but i'm getting the other one done the one, the, right. the one eye for me is not working, so I'm gonna get the other one done, and it's gonna be amazing because I, I my world through one eye is just the best. <laughs> I wake up every day, I put up an eye patch on, and I go, "This is living." <laughs> um, but the the well, near thing, you don't ask them because they're gonna just tell you what you want to hear. They're gonna tell you what you want to hear. and so you gotta <laughs> ask your friends who have gotten veneers before, and they'll tell you the truth. And you got to do a f- trusted friend who doesn't just want to bring you in on their suffering. You know, like friends are trying right. to sell you in on having a baby or buying a house because they want more. P- well, Sorry, Nikki. Please. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Come on, suffer with me. Like, uh, take on this burden. So I think in the long run, I will not regret it. And oh, I'm you glad won't at all. that I, I wasn't a pushover because, you know, a week ago when I had these temporary ones fitted, they're like, okay, are you good with this? We're going to send it off to the lab. And I listened to my gut. I listened to my gut and I was like, (laughs) I don't think so. I am really having trouble speaking. This is what I do for a living. I sing and speak. I need to enunciate every word, every syllable. Like, this is not okay. And um, Not every broadcaster has felt that way. (laughs) They have? I'm just kidding. Like, some people speak for a living are like, I'm fine slurring words. That's true. Um, Oh, my God. Barbara Walters. Yeah. Totally had a thing. uh, uh, Drew Barrymore has, uh, like, a little bit of a thing, you know? And that's like, (laughs) I love your impression. Please do it. I just say that she does the, in my act, I love Drew Barrymore, and she's the one person who I, I do this, like, spiel about. Try to say spiel. 
spiel. It's okay. perfect. Oh, okay. yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you hit it right on the head. Okay, um, you hit it right on the back of your big tooth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can joke about Anya's teeth because they're going. The, the thing, the thing that she has a problem with, by the way, I don't see it, and so it's or fun for me it. to make fun of it. I don't. Yeah, or hear it. Like I doesn't. So if you think I'm being mean and teasing Anya, <laughs> I'm also making fun of something that she's getting rid of. Follows the yeah, jet. I ran upstairs to do the podcast and Matt was like, have a great day, babe. And I was like, thank you. I'll see you in an hour. And he goes, I'll see you in an hour. Yeah, and I go, you can really stop. Doing <laughs> and that he's like, I don't hear it. I'm just giving you shit for fun. I'm like, that can stop. You're like, suffering succotash. I am so <laughs> sick of you. <laughs> uh, and the, a bunch of besties came out to the show after and started giving me feedback about my veneers. They did. They were like, I think they look great. Mm -hmm. I forget that people listening actually exist and i might oh. see them oh, they listen yeah. very carefully i know that's a new thing for you <laughs> it's been it's been a thing in my life for many years where you're like i d did you read my diary and they're like no you said it on a podcast that goes out to thousands and thousands and thousands they're like of i know like, you can squirt if you do this or that to your <laughs> i mean some besties come up with things that i go i don't know what the fuck you are referring to and they say it like it was like something i because they maybe heard it yesterday and it was an old podcast episode mm -hmm. and i'm talking old right. as in last week and i have moved on <laughs> but I, I i have a lot of podcasting friends and everyone reports the same thing it's not that i like i'm not caring about these you just think about a conversation you had a week ago you just don't remember and we're in the moment baby i'm not like planning these things right and you talk very frankly yes so it's like am I, am I talking on the podcast or am i talking to like my girlfriends yes totally so often i've had therapists be like thank you so much for sharing what you just shared and i'm like i literally just said it on the podcast <laughs> too like two hours ago none of this is like confidential i don't care if you tell other people they're always like it's safe with me i'm like tell your cl other clients if that helps them um secrets are safe um <laughs> with me secrets because if you do tell someone a secret you know they're gonna tell someone right don't we all know that no one unless you're like have a partner that you trust who has no friends who is maybe a mute like <laughs> ev it's, it's you can't hard. tell anyone hard, anything yeah. without knowing that they're going to at least tell someone and they're gonna maybe not say your name but they're gonna say a friend and then the friend is going to be able to like figure it out. Like I had one yeah. secret about a friend that I kept that like was one that I was like, I am never going to tell anyone this. It is ours and I am a good friend and I'm never going to betray this person. And then she came out and was like, I have this thing. And I'm like, that was the one <laughs> she was. She got all this press for it. I'm like, I was the, that was my secret to keep for you, bitch. And now you're on the cover of People <laughs> magazine. Oh, but um. Anyway, I can joke about it with you because it's something that you're going to fix. I would never, ever yeah. make fun of your, if you were keeping this thing I, and I ever heard you do it, I would never make fun of it because Jeff Ross always says you can roast people for things that they can change. Oh, that's, that's true. That's a slippery slope because sometimes people can't change things that you go, well, just go on a diet. You could change it. It's like, well, that's, it's, that doesn't mean you can make fun of them just because you can change it, you know? Yeah. But what I was going to say was, oh, true you can't bite your nails. I heard oh, yeah. that also they stain, the, the, the veneers stain more easily, so you have to get your teeth whitened well, more often. Oh, well, true? Nanya told me my teeth are going to be this white for the rest of my life no matter what. They, that's not what I heard. I've researched, the, I've heard different things on Google, but for, I've talked to a friend who has them and they don't stain. I'm, unless you're like trying to get them to stain, they really resist stain. That's great. Oh, I mean, okay. I'm I would definitely do it. I won't do it because I'm too scared of... I have commitment issues and I can't commit to giving up this thing that's been with me my whole life. That's why I still live in St. Louis. That's why I'm just like, maybe when my parents die, I'll be able to like lose my teeth or something like something neat, big needs to be taken from me before that. Like my teeth to me are like, they've been there since the beginning. Have you ever seen a yes. baby's skull? They've been in my head. <laughs> my eggs also. We're born with all the eggs we have. Yep. That's fucked up up dude so fucked up it's so weird that as little babies we have like so many like woman eggs <laughs> inside of us but they're immature <laughs> <laughs> and we have like fucking eggs in us they're Gross. immature well, these... like they won't they can't get fertilized Ugh. i just learned that okay well that's is... a good point it is weird that your permanent teeth don't show up till you're like what 10 or 11 yeah mine came in loud and clear they busted through and I, I had buck teeth for or, until I got braces from, I guess, fourth grade until seventh grade. They were bucking out, man. They were wild. Did you have buck teeth, too? No, uh, no but I had an overbite. Oh, yeah. 
and so now Anya does too. Yeah. Yep. That's it is right. weird because you know, there's people in this room. Everyone knows when you've got a nail or like a hangnail or something, you know exactly where to place it on your bite yes. line to get it, where your two teeth can meet. And then when you have in like um, like what I have in my uh, Invisalign. It's gone. Like that little, like the th if you need to open a package or something, can you imagine the rest of your life not having, I guess you'll find a new spot to rip I things guess, open. I guess, but like, we should I be eat ripping protein bars. Open. Yeah. Every day I eat protein bars and I never thought about the fact that I can't bite into a protein bar. I'm, I'm never going to like, take you know how bethany frankel put out that cool video of her eating candy it's like my asmr oh, she's I biting love it into so this she's, gummy oh yes it's such a and good one and i was one. just like her i videos. won't be able to do that mm. but then i talked Why to not? my friend jill today and she has like all veneers through her whole mouth and she's like no it's great no regrets it's gonna be fine they look great you just need them she gave me a couple little tips she's like the back should not be thick you should definitely get that fixed hold on but, this biting she, thing you can bite into things, she said, mm -hmm. because to Carlisle yeah. last night told me she has to trepidatiously eat apples, uh, at jerky, any, any, she can't ever bite into anything without she thinks about it first now, which is not that big of a burden. I mean, okay, yeah, so you I have tend to, think to a little side bit. with our Carlisle too, yeah, because my friend Jill has a bridge and veneer, so maybe it's easier for her. I'm just pissed off about this thing. It hit me the other day in the middle of the night in a depression. Matt, I was just like. <laughs> he, he hits me Get I wanted to come out of here <laughs> but I was just thinking it. you know what this is like this is what? like if someone said Oh, you don't like your hands? You have age spots and wrinkles? Well, guess what? You can get Angelina Jolie's exact perfect hands with her skin. We'll, we'll just take your hands, hands off and replace perfect. them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just like Someone's imagine hands that perfect hands. Mm -hmm. And then they, they sew rubber hands onto your hands. And then you realize no one told me these hands don't work. They're just beautiful. And they sit there, but they don't work. They I'll don't never pick work. anything up. So that's what this thing is. It's like, hello, in the apocalypse, I will be fucked. If these fall out, I'm just going to have stalactites oh, no. sitting there. Oh, no. Yeah. That's like, good. You I can like not bite into prey. That's last of us. Evolutionarily, be... I am fucked. No, this is good news. If cordyceps really takes over, like in The Last of Us, mm -hmm. and you get it, you're going to be like a gummy zombie and no one's going to get bit. You're just going to go like, oh, <laughs> and just gnaw on people, on people's necks with your okay, gummies. So you spun it. Little in a good way. Thank stalactite. You. Yeah, that's good. If you get bit by a zombie, you're just going we're just going to be like, "Hang out, keep hanging out. You don't have anything <laughs> to give this to us with." Man, Last of Us is are is everyone watching? I'm not caught There's up men on in the, the room. Well, yes. Are you guys watching? Yes, yes, a we lot have of not. yes. It's so good. It's it's have you gotten into it yet? I I just can't watch ap apocalyptic stuff. Why? Because you're worried. it just makes me depressed. I'm trying to like stay positive and <laughs> oh, this may, it, for some reason it does not make me depressed. Watching like Emily in Paris would make me depressed because <laughs> I'm not as thin as her. I'm not. My life isn't going as well as her. I'm not in Paris. I'm not that shit. Reality shows make me depressed. Last of Us. I'm like I'm not. This is total fantasy. It's good. It okay. was it was good last I'm night. I'm surprised you're watching a zombie. Show. It's me and Chris's show. Chris is very into it because it's boy zombie. But last night he was definitely disappointed in this episode because it's just like a date. These two girls go on a date the whole time, and I was loving it. But but then then there is there is a scene where a zomb a zombo wakes up and like attacks them, and it's really good. And um, it's just interesting because the cool thing about the show is that I love that this whole thing happened twenty years prior where the world changed. It's like COVID, but if COVID was way, way worse and lasted forever and everything changed. And there are people that were born within the time who have never lived in the old time. So I've talked about this before, but th this little girl, Ellie, in it has never flown in a plane. She's never driven in a car. She's never played a video game, but she knows about all this stuff. So can you imagine if like... Oh, that's interesting. We think about people in history that never played video games, never drove in cars, never... But they couldn't imagine what that was. She can at least see it. And she's like, I have never get to do that. And... um. And so there, she gets to experience a little bit of it on this last episode, and it's so good. And Joel is not in the episode at all, but boy, is he just fun to look at, even when he's, like, writhing and dying and has, like, an open wound. Um, oh, my God. I can't wait to catch up. We're still on Alone. I mean, we're on the new season of Alone, and it's it's the same thing. It's, it's yes. almost like How would apocalypse. you do it alone with your veneers? Yes. <laughs> terribly i'm sure yeah, I, i'd be I trying to like gnaw on a fucking musk ox's leg and they would Penis. pop out 
They eat it all. <laughs> they eat it you all. You gotta get that vitamin D. I wanna I wanna watch the new show Daisy Jones and the Six or whatever. It's about like a band in the seventies. I think uh Elvis's granddaughter is in it. Oh. Other people. I hear that's gonna be good. There's a new reality show that I sent Anya last night that is supposed yes. to be really, really bad and good. What's it called? Do you remember? Perfect match. We're gonna get perfect in on match that. on Netflix. Oh, and you've got to watch Stolen <laughs> Youth. Holy shit! On Netflix or on Hulu, Stolen Youth. It is about a, a cult that this dude. This it's called f- g- Creepy Father sleeps on your couch and then gets you in a sex call. It should be called Creepy Father on a couch. And creepy it is Ball Dad creepy. infiltrates Sarah Lawrence. <laughs> It's unreal that this man was able to get all of these kids on board. Like, it just shows you how impressionable we all are. What's to... what's the premise, real quick? Okay, these a bunch of college coeds are living in an off-campus apartment together. Their f- sophomore year, one of them is dating this really pretty girl who has a dad who's just getting out of prison because he was wrongly put away because the government was after him. He finally gets out. He ends up sleeping on their couch. He is a very he worked for the CIA apparently and all these things and and uh, you know covert ops and he uh, he pretty much starts just like talking to them about their past trauma. This is how these cults start. Psychology, even though I love psychology, I love talking about trauma. He gets them to admit like you know things happen in your past and then he starts to bring up things this is this is how they get them they start to get these kids to admit to things that happened to them or to uncover things in the past that may have happened to them you know uh what's it called uh, memories when they're forgotten repressed. Oh, yeah. repressed 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 memories now when you get people to open up repressed memories whether they're repressed or not what you do then is is you open up a world of things that could have happened that probably didn't and so once he's got that in that, that hook in them of like all these things happen to you and they they cut off their families cult they are sleep deprived because they're staying up all night talking to this guy and then they start he starts to accuse them of like br- i mean it's then they start living with him i mean it it just you slowly see how dumb people can be even though these are smart people and one and the big headline of the thing is that they got this um columbia university med school uh got full ride went to harvard she they got her he got her and um and you can just see the devastation of like mind control what it does and how i mean they he might have been poisoning them it's very unclear but i didn't give anything away that will make you not want to watch the documentary it's really good um, oh i found to to out what? who that man was that uh gave him his apartment that was his attorney in jail oh my god he convinced his attorney to let him stay in his apartment i'm not apartment, kidding you and then he, i don't want to meet leave. larry i will i feel that even i if i met larry would be persuaded somehow to hold his penis late at night as we slept that's how he had these girls sleep next to him one on each side and one held his penis through the night he's like that's how she sleeps that's that's what she needs that's that's what you need that's how uh, we're gonna that's how you're not gonna damage she held it was it like over his thigh or like in between his legs i think it's like he slept on his back and then they slept next to him side by side and one of them would just put her hand over and hold it (laughs) which is kind of fun to do sometimes if you're in a partnership where it's kind of like fun to just be like i just because flaccid penises (gasps) did you just say you do that <laughs> yes i do and so i later that night i had watched the documentary and i told chris i was like can i just show you what these girls had to do and then i was like can i just do this and feel safe because flaccid penises are so funny it's so cool that oh you my have God. them what i read in a tantric yoga book that that this was one Uh-oh. of the things they suggest to connect with your partner throughout the day like just rest your hand on their penis <laughs> yes i yes. just remember that it was a repressed memory <laughs> well, I've got you then. So why do you keep damaging all the microphones I send you? Um, you owe me seven hundred thousand dollars. All right, we have to go to break, but we'll be back with so much more after this, including an update on um, what was her name? Lynette Peyton. Peyton. <laughs> you were way oh off. God, that was far off. <laughs> Peyton, who um, whose brother is gay and wanted to go to her wedding. We actually talked to her over the weekend and have an update for you, and much much more after this. All right, we are back. So if you remember from the last episode, we had a fan thrax from Lynette slash Peyton who said... <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> you get Lynette. That's I don't such know. like an archaic name. Because I, I, I see Peyton in my head. I see a Y, I see an E, and then I l- let it go. And then there's like, what, I fill <laughs> in the rip. blanks. So, okay, so l- Peyton sent us this. Um, 
So she pretty much she she so if you don't remember for those that didn't hear the episode she was getting married she was having her brother want to come to the wedding and maybe kind of come out at this wedding it was a West Virginia wedding and a lot of her relatives didn't know that he was gay and it was going to be like a coming out for him and she was kind of like nervous that well we're going to get filled on why she was nervous um so I'm going to get to the meat of this. This is the first event he mentioned bringing his boyfriend to, and my request of not doing so might overflow his cup and ruin any shot I had of having a closer and deeper relationship with him. I wouldn't intentionally want to make himself smaller, but that is what I feel like I am doing to him. I called him the same night I left the voicemail for the show. I was making myself sick over expressing my wants without hurting either of their feelings. We had a big talk and cried together. You hit the nail on the head saying his lack of response or follow through is due to the weight of hiding who he is from the people whom... Who love him the most. I was able to express how badly I want to be a part of each other's lives and want to be there for him. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> no, this is such a, I'm so glad she wrote this. Unfortunately, the boyfriend and my schedule didn't uh, and slash won't allow for us to meet before the wedding, but we're going to try in between the wedding and honeymoon. So okay. separate place for her to meet him and like Love have it. him ingratiated into the family. Brother is supposed to watch dogs and bring boyfriend with him. I'm thankful they were both open and understanding of my wants and there isn't bad blood which she wrote in cursive a different font and wrote a line underneath because she knows she's i'm a swifty so there wasn't bad blood over the situation i hope reiterating to him that i am always going to be on his side has made his load a little lighter i am also very excited to meet the man my brother loves okay so the Aww. questions from the pod that she wanted to address Rather than being afraid to share the spotlight or rather being afraid that the spotlight will be taken away from me, my fear is that I will not look back on this day with anything but love. So she wrote in parentheses, worst case scenario. So that makes sense. She doesn't that need totally the spotlight. She just wants the day to just be all about love, no drama. Um, I tried to find out if he planned on bringing a plus one months in advance so we could have him introduce boyfriend in smaller pre-wedding events. Oh. oh. Makes sense. Um, and we are only doing a ceremony and dinner, so there's no reception uh, or buffer to bring him in later. Okay, all of it makes sense. Thank you for the clarity on this. Anya yeah. actually met um, Peyton face-to-face. -face. I did not. She just gave a letter to Anya to get to me. The little dove. Yes. She attached it to Anya's wing. She flew it back. <laughs> She's to so sweet. Little dove. Very cute. Listener, thank you to our besties for being so beautiful. No, she was so nice. She was. I was like, how did you feel when you were listening to the podcast? She's like, I cried. I'm like, because we hurt your feelings. <laughs> Did I hurt your feelings? She's like, no, I was so touched that it Aww. got heard and That's addressed. So, nice. so that was so sweet. Yeah. Sometimes when I, I meet a lot of fans that are go that go, oh, you read my fan threats or you played it. And I always get nervous because I'm like, Did I say something mean? Or did I not that I would ever say something mean, but sometimes you like make sometimes you disagree with something they say. You just right. like I always just want to tread lightly, especially when people are generous enough to give us their voices and their and, and content like that. So um lot, met a lot of besties this weekend. We had so many shows. I was yesterday exhausted, but I feel alive again today, especially seeing Noah picking me up in her RAV4 that she let me drive on the way here, and she definitely was Starbucks. scared. In no, the I was not. You weren't? No. My driving doesn't scare you? No. Thank you. No way. I, I think you're trained. a very good driver. You saw that lady in the Jeep like switch <laughs> lanes yes. abruptly, this is and the you thing. avoided it. It was great. And we it's raining in LA. We could have smashed big time by this Jeep that was coming. Any other person that I was driving her car would have been like, oh! God and like how and done a whole thing but no it was just like I got it this is what I don't like is overreactions to things that don't happen people exactly. was like oh my god they could have and it's like it didn't happen <laughs> let's keep going on with our day so thank you and I know you're very good at multitasking so I know that you're a good driver because there's a lot going yeah. on and you're good at handling all of it I love she driving. never misspells anything in her text when she's driving she's got the right grammar <laughs> that no, did not I happen dictated. I didn't see Nikki text while she was driving today <laughs> I I did but I was looking up when I did it I don't ever look down and text so if you know who's suffering if I'm texting and driving not other people I'm using one hand but I'm the looking people up receiving your text yes they're suffering because they're I, I say thank you darling and I write thank you Darlene um, speaking, of, speaking Darlene, of Darlene um, I am I'm looking at dogs tomorrow which I'm always looking at dogs because they're cute as fuck. But I am uh, looking to get a dog tomorrow because I've been thinking about like getting a house. I've been thinking about making what? a move. Like there's different. There's like 
I thought I was pregnant last week. There was like things going on. It was accidental. Like I didn't want to be. And thank God I wasn't. But I took a pregnancy test in uh, between you only have Cincinnati like a- and Lexington, Kentucky. And I, <laughs> the odds of me getting pregnant at the age of 38 accidentally when I was off birth control for two weeks at the time that it happened are literally I should play the Powerball. If, well, if I get pregnant, I think actually when you get off of birth control, your chances increase, but you'd only be at like a, I don't it's know, my body. 6% chance. Yes. There was no chance. So wow. yes, it's, it's, it's so hard to get pregnant. Go out there and try girls to even try. Yeah. It's, just, it, it's great literally message, impossible. <laughs> it is. Also, it was anal. <laughs> well, you don't know. They're all, it's all connected down there at this point for me. Oh, that's right. Like, <laughs> if you do it enough. Yeah. Nikki it all knows. opens up. <laughs> Um, so I don't know what that meant. That really grossed me out. But, um, yeah, so I don't, there's been this, like, I need a change. I want to get a haircut. I want to maybe dye my hair. I know these are all things I'm not going to, I'm going to get a dog instead. Okay. I'm not going to do something that will only last a couple months until it grows out. (laughs) I'm going to do something that's permanent that lasts until it dies in 20 years. Cause small dogs. Or they get, be living, man. And get a dog whose hair you can cut or like change its hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Ah, that's such a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to give my dog a pixie cut. <laughs> yeah. And have everyone go, looks, no, it looks good. Um, <laughs> bangs. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give. I honestly <laughs> hate when dogs have bangs. Get the hair out of your goddamn dog's face. These poor dogs that have constantly seen through bangs. I know it's cute. Get. Cut their bangs. My mom goes, you get away from Marion's face. Because Marion constantly is like, like <laughs> her eyeballs are penetrated by hair constantly. Like I see the hair like going into her eye. I'm like, and, but she Aww. doesn't care. She's just like, ah, like, and I'm like, that's got to be annoying. So I start to cut and she goes, you get away from my dog. I'm like, it used to be mine. So I'm looking at getting a dog. I want a small one that I can take on planes with me. It can travel with me all the time. I don't have to get sitters ever. My mom's like, you don't get a dog, Nikki, please. My mom doesn't want me to do anything, I realize. <laughs> like, anything I would ever want to do. The other day I was looking at a house to buy, and I was like, Mom, I'm not going to buy it. But, like, if I were to buy a house, this is, like, I could see me getting a place like this. She goes, all right, don't do it. Don't, like, it's, <laughs> I never have, like, even a little interest from her. Anything I want to spend money on, I wouldn't do it, Nick. I wouldn't do it. So I got LASIK. I didn't tell her I was getting LASIK because I knew I was going to hear, I wouldn't do it. I think it's too late. You just stick with what you got. (sighs) Too late. Stick with what you got. (laughs) Well, there was like a common misconception about LASIK that at least had trickled down to me that it's too late at one point. That's what I was led to believe, too. Yeah. No, oh, really? the people in their 80s are getting LASIK. I was with them in the <gasps> yeah. waiting room. Oh, yeah. You can get it till the end. <laughs> also, stick with what you got is such a powerful message from a parent. Like, oh, that must God. permeate other parts of your life. Stick with what you got. It was everything I heard as a kid. Because I used to tell my mom, I'm ugly. Why did you make... Why did I used to say, why did you and dad have sex when you knew you could make something as ugly as me? This would be after boys oh. teased me at school and, like, I buck teeth. And I was like... Lauren was perfect looking. She had not like, she was not, you know, awkward looking yet or ever. But, um, and I used to say, I remember like just berating my mom being like, you and dad knew that you had DNA that could make something as ugly as me. Why would you irresponsibly have sex? Like I was smart enough to like connect it to them. Like this is your fault. And my mom would go, you be happy with what you have, which is not calming. That doesn't make you feel good. It just makes you feel like, yeah, you are ugly. Deal with it. Right. Right. As yeah. opposed to like, no, you're beautiful, which I probably wouldn't have ex- accepted either. And I'd be talking about she used to say, no, you're beautiful when I knew I wasn't. That's what right. my old therapist Donna used to say, because I would say I was an ugly kid. And my dad used to say, you are so beautiful. And he truly believed it. Like he would just stop sometimes and like he'd just be staring at me and I would like oh catch him God. staring at me. And I go, dad, what? And he's like, you're just so goddamn beautiful. You're just one of the most beautiful people. It was very loving. It wasn't creepy. Aww. He like loved that I had like, he was like these like fly, like the things I hated most about myself in seventh grade, if I could pinpoint was the bags under my eyes because I had chronic sinus infections because my parents smoked inside. It was their fault. But also um, <laughs> I had like a, like cowlicks. So if I put it back my hair, I was always jealous of girls. I could put that back their hair and it would be just slick. Mine would be like these right. fuzzy things hanging off like Bozo's crown. Like it was just, <laughs> it was, it looked like ethereal. I always had these like, fl- and like no hairspray. Why don't you have them person. now? I don't know. I don't know. 
It was a child thing, but I, or I've embraced them. I don't even know what it is, but I had these baby hairs that I hated. And my dad used to say, those are amazing. They're the best thing. And my therapist, Donna, goes, that's why, um, that's why you have anger towards your dad. Because you knew he was a liar. He was lying to you and you knew it. And he lied to you on the spot and you knew it every day he was lying to you when he said you were beautiful. And I was like, that's kind of a good point. Like if you if you have something going on, your parent constantly is like, no, you're beautiful. You kind of get to, even with Santa Claus. Sorry if kids are listening, but like but when what that. What if he didn't think he was lying to you? What if he believed it? I do think he believed it, but I took it as him lying to me. Because he, he did lie about Santa when I confronted him. I saw his foot shaking. I knew. He goes, what do you oh think? God. And his foot was going fucking wild. And I just oh my God, I have a question about twitching. that. Yeah, what? I was 12. I was on a... F- I was on a six hour flight the other day and the whole flight, this guy in my row was uh, shaking his foot and it was moving the entire row. And no, no, no. You got, you got to go, sir. Sorry. And just gently put your hand on it. Touch him? On his you penis. You don't need to touch him. Well, I guess I used to do that to Andrew. I would just <laughs> gently touch his leg and go, hey. It's because no. it would be like shaking the whole couch, you know? Ian. Ian's, Ian's foot. That's the one. Ian's the one I used to do it to. Ian finance. Yeah, but people that do that, they burn more I don't calories. Think you can touch people. Without asking. I mean, you're a gorgeous woman. You probably could. He was an angry too. man. Okay. I asked him if I could go to the bathroom and he rolled his eyes and goes, Ugh. What? Oh, yeah. God. He was, no, he if goes, the captain's up seat. there. You can't. What? Yeah, the so co-captain. this guy was shaking the entire row? Yep. The whole row. He was like doing restless leg syndrome. And he had seven shots of Jack Daniels. Okay, this oh. isn't someone you want to talk to. You're right. You're just right. going to have to like sit through this one. Yeah, that's a scary person. But also, man, there's a part of me that wants to get that person to try to punch me. I, it'd be <laughs> worth it. Like I said, as no. they should. As they, as they should. should. That woman, I wanted her to punch me because I had done nothing wrong except to go, as they should. Oh, it would have <laughs> been amazing. Nikki Glaser gets decked in the face by some Trumpy, like, or some guy on a plane, like, assault. I would beg you to hit me if you're a crazy person and I've done nothing wrong. I look like the hero. And I get an excuse to get a nose job. I have a question. In our (laughs) notes, you said you put an embarrassing boarding area moment. Oh, I can't even, like, tell it yet. Oh, okay. It's, never mind. so embarrassing. Scratch that. No, okay, I will tell it. (laughs) But this is, like, it's rare that I get humiliated. Like, humiliated. It happened the... Okay, uh, this is a smaller... It it happened twice in boarding areas. And you want to know why it's happening? Because of my noise-canceling headphones. (laughs) Those goddamn (laughs) AirPods cancel out too much noise. You don't hear people around you. You don't understand... And boarding areas, you know when they pack them in, there's like four announcements going on at once for four different gates. And you're hearing, oh, we're boarding group B. We're boarding group A. We're boarding, you know, veterans. Wheelchair accessibility. So... I hear, (laughs) okay, I'll just tell the one. I hear, I hear, I know that I, like, I've gotten this ticket bought by me, bought for me by, like, Sony. So I'm fine first class. I have all the perks, right? I know I'm number one, you know? So they call, we're beginning boarding. And I see already some people trickling on. So I go, I, they, and they weren't, you know, disabled. So I knew it was my turn. They were just regular not that people who are disabled aren't regular. Please don't come after me. But, you know, they were able to like wheelchairs. Yeah. yeah. So I just go right. I don't cut anyone, but I'm just zipping along. And <laughs> I realize, though, I know what I could be in trouble for. I've got a fanny pack on. But if I realize if you wear if you wear a fanny pack, it doesn't count as a personal bag. If you are wearing it on your body, it doesn't count. But I have a guitar and I have a suitcase. OK, so then. I scan my boarding pass and I hear and there's tons of people right and I hear the woman say something and I know what she's saying she's saying your suitcase is too big it's not going to fit in the overhead which it was because I had done the little expander zipper Uh. and I had forgotten to do the unexpanded one Uh, right right. so I I forgot to do that before they started boarding I was all fucked up on time I had I don't like to ever be someone who holds up the line so I quickly (laughs) oh my god I quickly set my suitcase down like pull it to the side it sets down unzip it really quickly and i'm just like taking things out and holding them and zip it back up and she and i go and i go uh and then i start walking down the 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 jet bridge and they're screaming my name i can't hear it but then eventually she's like ma'am and then i get back and she's and everyone's watched this whole thing okay she goes ma'am and i go what she goes your boarding pass and i was like 
oh, oh, it didn't scan, so I give it back. And she goes, it's the wrong flight. <laughs> so oh, my God. Flight was ne- it wasn't even boarding yet. So not only did everyone on this flight see me, like, oh. spill out my things and be like, oh, oh, and then be like, see, now it fits. And, like, do this whole thing. <laughs> but then I had to walk back out, and then everyone from my own flight saw this display. It was, like, so, because of, of these of damn- shame. No, it was so embarrassing. And then yesterday I got really c- c- <laughs> Again, it was so embarrassing. This is the problem without having a friend. When I was like traveling with Andrew constantly, it was nice because if something embarrassing happened, you had someone to go, ah, that was like you trip and fall. You're like, oh, what an idiot. When you're by yourself, no one's there to like laugh with you. And like, and if you do it to yourself, you look like an even bigger idiot. Like, oh, what a dumb, dumb I am. (laughs) So, so I, yesterday I finished my latte. I like sucked it down within like two minutes, even though I get them extra hot. I get them extra hot so that I can drink them fast because if they're just normal temperature, I'll chug too much. So I get them extra hot so they'll like burn me if I chug. But oh, so, my- so, you drink, so you get them to drink slow because you said fast to drink fast. Yeah, I get, I, yeah, so it'll slow me down. Slow you down. Sorry, I was yeah. talking too fast. I get them extra hot so it will slow me down. The problem is my throat is now calloused and I can just chug <laughs> scalding hot oh. liquids. It's no problem. So I chug this fucking latte. And then we're about to board and there's like, you know, everyone is waiting because they're boarding like the early group. So everyone's waiting around. It's like really tight. And I see this trash can and I'm like, I know I can fucking <laughs> dunk it. Or like, you know, just like swish. Oh, no. So it's and it's like two feet away. It's nothing. And I know <laughs> it, it hits the side, the cap and <gasps> the holder come <gasps> off and they both go different ways. And then the cup falls about three like nothing goes in the trash but then my cup splits into three pieces and it goes everywhere and i have to like collect it and i'm living in this little like i have like a a gentle podcast on you know sam harris is talking to me about like no free will and it's i can't hear anyone and i know everyone's looking at me and i'm collecting it and i'm going oh that was embarrassing and i'm saying it was embarrassing to myself i mean it's humiliating it's making me hot just thinking about it because everyone must have been just like i hope i wasn't recognized in that moment it was just so bad so that was my embarrassing boarding moment. Just knowing that people were like, it always happens when I have those damn headphones in because I can't hear what people are saying and I assume I know what they're saying. Does anyone else out there have those fucking yes. AirPods? You don't have the AirPod Pros though. Not yet, but I was wearing these the other day on a plane yesterday and I was sitting next to like if Paddington Bear was a female woman oh my God. that was this like 80 years old. <laughs> was hilarious. She you had were giving us updates hat. of what she was saying. <laughs> Yeah, a huge purse. She was so disheveled. I don't think she had been on a plane ever, maybe a couple times like decades ago. And she just it, like I was obsessed with her. She had all these papers, like old graph paper from 1982 in her bag and like took out all these endless oranges that she was eating. And then she like leaned over to me and was like, that's a nice snack on something. a plane, by the way. It like it's a <laughs> it burst is. of like it a freshens. gentle, nice smell. It's that is the best thing to eat on a plane is a fresh orange. No one's going to be upset, I don't think. Um, OK, she so was pa- dying to talk and connect. And I was oh, like, God, I'm no. in my zone. And she's like, I'm eating my seaweed snack. And she's like pointing at me and like, take off your headphones, take them off. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go. What? And I take them off and she goes, those are a great snack. No, no. (laughs) How? how She's like, I lost my clog. She's just like feverishly like kicking her leg under my seat and like everywhere. And then she's like, she has, it's so bright and we take off and she's just, her nose is like smushed against the glass for the whole flight. She's just staring into the abyss. Like she can't believe. And Matt and I can't read our iPads because she's, it's so bright in the plane. If you're at the window, shut the fucking window. Unless you're a child, (laughs) shut the window. People want to sleep. People want it dark. People want to watch their phones. Um, yeah, the, the just the idea that people knew my the woman had clearly said to me, "Ma'am, this is the wrong flight." And then what they see is a woman just violently throw her <laughs> suitcase to the ground and open it, and then like take some things out, zip it back up, zip the other zipper that tightens it, then put it in that little cart thing to be like, and go see it fits. <laughs> Oh, you did like, that? what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I have my guitar. 
guitar that's swinging around and I'm like, ah! I just, I mean, I looked insane. It's just so embarrassing when you've been doing something for a while. That's my biggest embarrassment is when there's been a long birth of time where people are witnessing you thinking one thing and it not being the right way. Yeah. Like if I, like the other day I said the word stealth. I was like telling people to take pictures at my shows. Because it's always like pictures are always take no photography during the show. I always tell people, please take pictures, sneak v video. I don't care. So I told them on my story, I was like, be stealth. And someone wrote me and was like, stealth, be stealth, be best. Are you Melania? And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck, it's stealthy. And then I also misspelled Ithaca and my dad knew. And then Anya was like, oh, like you misspelled Ithaca. And I go, you knew it. I go, why didn't you tell me? You're just like talking behind my back that I misspelled Ithaca. I can't say Ithaca. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good point. <laughs> At least I can say it. But I hate things happening behind my back. I mean, who likes that? But like the way you said it, I was like, you've noted it. You know, I misspell this thing. I, I bet you have a I list of things. I was about to write to you. I just got distracted. I was about to be like Ithaca. And then I'm like, I don't be cunty. Who cares? Like, I'm sure she's got yeah, be cunty people. later when, she, when it's I just thought you would know, like someone had written it for sure. People had commented under it saying it's Ithaca. You're misspelling. How it. did you spell it? Do you remember? I, the way it should be spelled, the way it's said, <laughs> ithi, I T H I. Oh, okay. Aka. So it's I T H A. A. My bad. Please so don't come to my show. What do you want me to say? Just call anytime there's something wrong, just call it out in the moment. Because my biggest fear is people talking about me behind my back, which I know happens. I mean, this is what I do for a living. So that's most people have to talk about being behind my back because. There's no, you're not going to meet me to say these things. Or they DM me. But, like, the idea that my friends behind my back are like, she misspells Ithaca, is no. enough for me to not want to be friends anymore. Like, if, if I knew that that kind of, like, like shit talking was going on. Like, recently, you're I think, Anya, you had said our that. friendship? Yeah, yeah, I am. Recently, <gasps> Anya. <saying> <laughs> you, what's happening? <laughs> recently, Anya said something about, like, oh, one time we did have a, like, a, a, a talk about you and you're, like, like depression and like your moods and stuff and i was like a sidebar was had like i know it was out of like love but then just don't tell me about the sidebar later on right if you're talking about me behind my back don't ever let me know that it happened there's now, too many rules i can't remember all these well here's the only rule don't if you talk about me behind my back don't tell me you did ever <laughs> Why? It was for proof. everyone. It was proof that that person cared about you. That person who shall remain nameless. I don't need nameless. proof. I already know that that person cared about me. I don't need proof. Now I know that you don't care about me because you talked what? about me behind my back. We'll be back. We're going to break. Oh I got to talk to someone behind their back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Um, we're gonna do. We know nothing. Here's the theme song that has really doesn't fit. We know nothing. I may have edited it. Oh, you did? We know Yay. I don't know if I did. I think I should give us a call. Nope. Never mind. Nope. <laughs> Still the same. Give us a call. We'll give it our all. Because if there's one thing we know, we got to pick up the phone. We know nothing. Okay, so originally that song was for like an advice segment, which I think we should do because I think we did a pretty good job the other day for Lynette. Um, Peyton. Peyton. <laughs> Peyton. Uh, Peyton Lynette. So today we're going to try to describe something that we don't know anything about. Um, this was the subject that was picked earlier today. I really, this segment really, <sighs> I get scared about. I've been delaying it the whole show. I want to talk about anything else than this. Um, okay, so the thing we're going to try to explain is how electricity works. <laughs> It's so and easy. I, usually this is embarrassing, but now there's like four I men know. in this room <laughs> who work here at iHeart who I know that at least two of them could yeah, they probably like work with electricity. Yeah, that they work. Of, <laughs> they 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 know about Tesla coils and mm. uh, flying kites and uh, drones, little and drones. Yeah. Okay. Here's how. It looks. So there's a grid, right? Electricity is definitely on a grid. All I know is that. There was electricity last night in the episode of The Last of Us. I don't know okay. how, but there was. And I don't know how they're getting it. They're generators, right? What electricity is to me... <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> that's see. That's all I can say is, to me, electricity means love. It means power. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it means, um, 
I believe electricity is based on some kind of force, right? We're talking wind. We're talking water pressure. There's like a force that creates something that is bigger than, than something else. Thank God. And that, that force has to go somewhere and that then can make then make things do something. But where does it come from? Like, where like, does that force come from? Well, um, I don't. <laughs> wind, 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 and solar power, and and like water, like you know, like windmills, electric. That's electricity. Uh, sunlight can make electricity. I don't know how this all happens. Conduction, I think it's called. Okay, Conduction. so it's definitely a a bunch mm. of um, si- like it's. I I can't I can't even begin to describe what I don't know. So Anya, do you have any do you have any ideas? These guys are twitching it was, around. It like, was they're like I'm dying by, to tell you. It was not invented. Electricity I mean, was not inv- what the light bulb was invented by Benjamin Franklin. I thought it was Thomas Edison. That's what I thought. Thomas Edison. <laughs> yeah, because like Edison is isn't that like a an electric company in New <laughs> yeah, York? Edison. Yes, ben, it is. Ben Franklin did He did the kite. No, Thomas Edison was the kite. No, Ben. Ben Franklin was kite with a key, struck by lightning. Then he like don't look at me. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, but okay. electricity is a thing that it, it, I don't think it was invented. I think it just is, and we just discovered it. Oh yeah, yes. like when you rub okay, your I'm hair. Okay, nod. Oh, yes, when, on a balloon. Like static electricity exists because the electrons electrons are there. We go. Negative. That's a good. Uh-huh. Uh, positive and negative electrons. So you, there's Protons. energy harnessed by We're sails not and wind. That <laughs> dumb. Electricity just came to be in like the turn of one of the centuries. So it was recent. You know, like it's not like we're so stupid. A lot of people didn't know what the fuck it was or how to sure. get it. You know what? Okay, so it's for me. It's hard to understand. How does it get into everyone's house? Wires. So. But, but like how but well, you always look outside all those beans like when a, a, one of those poles falls over then boom no electricity or like a, a something explodes so i understand that but how does it travel through these wires <laughs> god <laughs> <laughs> spirit there's a grid it's all connected okay. through the grid Let's let's go online because I think we're out okay. of we're, we're out of ideas. The concept of electricity itself is based on electron movement. Okay, all right. We Anya. did not say that. Yeah. Thank you. When I you said. force electrons to move in sync, okay, I can and put in sync in anything and I get it. <laughs> Just they, the Timberlakes involved. Yeah. When they force electrons, when you force electrons, you to move in sync, they end up producing heat, which turns the wire they're moving into a magnet. Okay. Let's get more into this. Cause we're gonna we're gonna learn right now. Wait, so all those wires outside are magnets? Probably. So why aren't cars just like being lifted in the air and attaching to them? And Britannica describes electricity as a phenomenon associated with stationary or moving electric charges. Every electrical charge is a fundamental property of matter being born by elementary particles. So I was right. Electricity is already a thing. We are just right. harnessing it. It can't be created or destroyed. For electricity, this elementary particle... Oh, God. I don't like the word elementary. Stop using it, dear Watson. I'm sorry. <laughs> For electricity, this elementary particle is an electron that has a negative charge, which is carried to the next electron through the convention method. So when we talk about how electricity works, it's essentially the result of the accumulation or motion of a specific number of electrons. Moreover... Electricity travels in a closed circuit for the electrons to move through it. Let's explain this with the help of an example. No, I don't want to know anymore. I don't need to know. I, I, I still imagine, don't okay, understand. Imagine you flip a switch to turn on the light. What do you do? You basically close a circuit. By applying the same logic, when you flip a switch off, you open a circuit. Well, I would think it was the opposite. It's saying when you cl- flip a switch off, you open a circuit. Now, when you close a circuit, the flow of electricity from the electric wires powers through them powers through them through the light and vice versa likewise okay i'm I'm done i'm done moreover electricity takes different forms like water coal wind solar hydroelectricity and nuclear i think we uncovered it i think i, I need to watch an episode coal. of like sesame street to explain this to me <laughs> i don't even think they would even try to do that tackle that yeah i mean was ben franklin involved at all he had he had the kite ben franklin electricity i'm typing it in I think I think he had the kite, but I don't think he was. Okay, Benjamin Franklin and the kite experiment. Okay, yes. Oh, 
Despite a common misconception, Uh-oh. Benjamin Franklin did not discover electricity during this experience, experiment, or at all for that matter. It's just the first. He just went to a park and got credit. <laughs> <laughs> he d- oh, on June on a June afternoon in 1752, the sky began to darken over the city of Philadelphia as rain began to fall and lightning threatened. Most of the city citizens sh- surely hurried inside, but not Benny Frank Franks. He decided mm-hmm. it was the perfect time to go fly a kite. He had been waiting for an opportunity like this. He wanted to demonstrate the electrical nature of lightning. Okay, so, um, yeah, he didn't discover it. So he wasn't a dum-dum. He he was doing something to show how electricity works. Yes, but I don't... had something to do with it, but he didn't discover it. Who invented electricity? Even (laughs) even though we know that's not it, but we know... Oh, shit, it's still writing. We know that no one invented it, but I would just want to write it that way because you know people would be searching it like that. Who invented electricity? Okay. William Grenier. Who? Schuyler oh, Wheeler. Henry M. Leland. And Ebenezer Kinnerslag. Scrooge. These are the inventors of electricity, so I guess it is. Benjamin Franklin took things a big step ahead. What about um, Thomas, Thomas Edison? Alva Edison is one of the greatest of all inventors and is normally credited with creating the light bulb. Oh, along light with Nic- bulb. Nicholas Tesla. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. We can't know everything. I can't believe those four guys are not famous at all. At all. They just had, like, bad marketing Everyone team. will be forgotten. They had oh, yeah, no they, did, they didn't have... <laughs> they they didn't pay six grand for a PR company. Oh, my like God. some people. <laughs> like some people. I am. Renier. <laughs> Final thought. We know nothing about electricity. I still don't know anything about it if someone tried to... We had a C minus. How do people have kids And when these questions come up? I guess you just Google stuff and then you learn together. And that's and that's what, that's what <laughs> Noah's thing where she was like, I was like, why do you want to have kids? And you were like, to see the world through their eyes. Really yes. she meant, because I need to learn some shit. <laughs> I need to like go back to school, to elementary yeah. school. And this is the only way. Oh my God. <laughs> it's embarrassing. But then uh, some dads are like, all right, this is where I excel. I've been waiting for this question. So here's a here's a positive electron, here's a negative, and then they just talk loudly. There was a guy in the park the other day, loud dad, showing his kids how to fish, and he was ruining everything for everyone because he was just shouting at them, teaching them how to fish and how these fish are different than those fish and what why did you the learn? Water. Did you learn anything from this loud dad? That I'm so grateful that I don't you have, have a quiet, kids. meek <laughs> boyfriend <laughs> well, I who raises meek, his. But yeah, he, he, he raises raised... his hand to, to before he can ask a question. <laughs> oh, wow. would you describe that as meek? Only He's to so Nikki. Sl- n- n- really, only to me? Fuck. Almost. Okay, is this another Sometimes sidebar to you've my had? Family. You no, know, he raises his hand, and I go, "Yes, Matt." And he goes, "Is it okay if we start the show uh, 15 minutes late tonight?" Like he's a meek guy. I don't. There's nothing wrong with being meek. I bet he's not meek in bed. <laughs> She's very pink. bossy. He's very bossy in bed. Yeah, I think so. Oh, all right. Has he ever he raised his, his hand, hand to you? a lot to to interrupt? Oh. <laughs> not yet. I'm hoping. Oh, to interrupt. I get. Yeah, I, I, I'm like this is an interruption. This thing because I'll be like, you know what I love, and then he's like, <laughs> just stop. Shh. Does, is Avi meek? Avi's very quiet. No, he's not. He's really loud. Really? But it's all, it's just like, not because like he has no hearing anymore. So he's just like naturally Why? loud. Does he have no hearing? One, he was born with a hearing deficiency and then he's been playing in grind bands for like almost his whole life. <laughs> yes. So his hearing's blown Last out. Last night, <laughs> I was at the comedy store and did the d- goddamn comedy jam and, um, Bill Burr was there and he had, and they were so fucking loud. We were backstage and the band was so loud. It was, I was, I was ready to like walk out because I was like, I can't be around this. And he was like, I can't believe you guys don't wear head or, you know, earplugs. And I'm like, I always bring them. I love, uh, I can't believe how many people don't. And he's like, I have tinnitus from not wearing it forever. But he had earplugs and he was so smart. But, um, and then I put in my AirPods. I was like, I don't have earplugs, but I do have my AirPods. It's perfect. (laughs) Um, but yeah, last night I was at the goddamn comedy jam and, Right before I'm going on, I was doing a Taylor Swift song like I've done with them for a while, and I was playing guitar. I made the mistake, which is a such a, um, I think a novice guitarist mistake of not like I didn't real. I always play the guitar sitting down. Never am I standing up. And then I stood up, and it was the the fucking strap was too long. 
So I'm like playing and I hadn't because I hadn't played it backstage. I figured I would be sitting on a stool or something when I got yeah. there. So I'm like playing it down like I'm like like in a grunge Johnny band Rocket or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, a grunge band. Exactly. So it was really hard for me to play, but it ended up going well. But right before I go on, this guy backstage who I don't even know, he was like, um, Matt Healy from the 1975 is here tonight. And I was like, he was like, he's a buddy of mine. I go, what? He's like, yeah, do you know him? And I was like, of course I know who that is. <laughs> He's here watching this show. And I was like, oh, and I'm doing a Taylor Swift song. He's like friends with her. It was like, I was so nervous. But then I was like, oh, this makes me so much better when the pressure's on, when I have someone in the audience that I'm like, I need to impress. Not that I was impressive at all. I listened to my vocals and they were piss poor. But um, I was like, because Carlisle was with me. She's like, are you nervous? And I'm like, I mean, kind of. But like, also, this is where I thrive. Like when there's not someone... When I get to have someone there that I have like a crush on or it's someone that I like really admire as a peer. That's why I'm always trying to get Chris to come see me perform because I'm like, it's going to be a better show because I'm trying to get laid from like being so dazzling that you can't help (laughs) but like be horned up for it. Even though I don't think most guys get like horny for women who are like commanding a stage yes they don't yeah they don't but for some reason it's like do you get do you get uh do you feel better Anya when you're performing and you know Matt is watching you adoringly no uh Matt yes but if I know a good guitar player is there I get I get so self-conscious and I'll make a bunch of errors and screw up because I'm like they're probably watching me play guitar and then I'm like fumbling yes well I went out knowing that Matt Healy was there and I knew that he would like like anyone would judge these comedians like trying to be what he does best like a fucking badass rock star i made the point of like we're comedians trying to be rock stars we know that we're not good at this just like rock stars are not good at being comedians but you guys get away with so much more and then i did my example of dave matthews being like it smells good out there tonight we're like he said weed (laughs) rock stars can say anything and people fucking die laughing but God forbid I sing a little bit in between jokes. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was, but it was really fun last night. Carlisle came out and um, yeah, Bill Burr played uh, "Smells Like Teen Spirit," and I love that song. I didn't know that he was going to play it, but he was only playing drums on it. And oh my God, Josh oh, Adam, yeah, he's a drummer. I and that, that those that drumming for that song is like the one song that I've been like, I want to get a drum kit because I love that those drums and. Um, so I I had already finished, but I was like, and Josh Adam Myers had already sang like a bunch of songs because he's with the band. So he was singing it, and I was like, I know this song really well. And I just ran up on stage in the middle of it because I was like, I want to perform with Bill Burr. <laughs> and so I sang uh, "Smells Like Team Spirit." It was so fun. I wish I would have looked at the lyrics a little bit more because they're weird. A mulatto, a mosquito. I don't even think you could say mulatto anymore. I'm like a mix. <laughs> yeah. per- oh, I thought he said I'm a lotto. <laughs> like no, he's he's a lottery he's ticket. Oh, she, she, yeah. <laughs> but it was so fun. It's so like, sorry, but comedy sucks compared to being a rock star. <laughs> it literally blows. It's it is the difference between getting. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, it's like, it's what do you like, like an over the it? pants hand job compared to like <laughs> full penetration when it comes to um, freedom and like of expression. And is it because the audience is more active, like through the set, like they're singing along with you? They can't really it's do more that. More emotional. With a joke. It's more emotional. Emo- you get to be more emotional. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's like so intriguing to me of just being able to like scream and like you can get like messy and go like, ah! like you can just. Like I love on on my explore page, it's all musicians like kind of like rubbing their face and being like and like twitching when they're singing and like getting like into it and like I love it. I love that like you can look like you're coming on stage and everyone's okay with it. Like that is freedom of expression more so than anything. And I think as a comedian, comedians are uh, 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 we're uh, <laughs> we're all wanting to be cool desperately we want you to think we're cool even when we're talking about how like we farted on someone's head or something we're still trying we're in control of the narrative and musicians are as fuck as well all the time you know we witness it and even you know ones that are overly performative and do too much of that like uh, i'm like a, like we were talking about some musician <laughs> who uh anya was watching the other night who like 
just like she can do anything and people are just like she's fucking amazing because guys just jerk <laughs> off to her and so she just like will eat a hot dog and like during her music video and people are like this is art and it's like no it's not like dance or something like <laughs> so musicians can be care too but there's just something so and a song is there's nothing better than a song no one is having their like no one you know gets married and walks down the aisle to a you know Brian Regan bit no one <laughs> <laughs> no no one is you're not watching like a love scene in a movie and you are <laughs> transfixed more like do you have you ever t thought about if you take music out of TV shows or anything how how you wouldn't even Sterile. know what to do yeah you wouldn't know how to feel you wouldn't know a zombie's about to come. You wouldn't know. Like, you always know a zombie's about to show up in The Last of Us because it's getting the, the music is too good. It's been too good for too long. And then it starts to get a little quiet and you know something's like music. You don't realize how much it's like um, dictating <laughs> your feelings. And so it's just way cooler. It's way more impressive. My voice teacher always says, especially singers, they were like, he goes, if you are a proficient singer and you master your voice, like, you know, and really work at it there's nothing more magical because it's coming from you you're making it out of nothing your instrument is inside your head the the inner workings like the way that people you know play a trumpet and have like a little a little tap of their finger will change a note in a certain way you can do that with all the way you shape your face and the way your tongue moves like all that stuff that's happening inside it look it's magic it's a magic trick and there's nothing more special than that and you don't have to lug it on a plane you don't it's always with you and so it it really is singing is the coolest thing you can possibly do as a human i believe i think it's like think the so greatest talent and it cuz and it cuz it feels like magic um and but what's cool about comedy is like Seinfeld nothing. says. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are so autonomous and independent. You're not looking for a record label to sign you to help you get big. Yes, you are. You're, Comedians are always are looking for managers and agents. That's all they talk yeah, about. But, but you know what? It doesn't, they don't know that it doesn't matter. Though. Like you can go on stage and say whatever you want. Anything you want. But you can go to open mics and play whatever you want and say whatever you want. And you guys get to say so much more. I don't get to talk about how in love with someone I am. It's not funny. I never mm, get to express yeah. my like You can't actual be as vulnerable. Yeah, you can't be vulnerable. And neither can you because that's why uh, lyricists always have to talk in metaphors because it's too much to hear like, I don't need to hear like, bubblegum tongue. Like that even <laughs> was like, come on, John, back off a little bit. That was too visceral. But that's, it's... But I, I do agree. I don't have to pay a band. That's why John Mayer is going out solo on this next tour. You think so? Well, I don't think. I think, first of all, I like to see musicians just with an acoustic guitar and their voice. I would prefer that over a huge band. No offense to bands. Hmm. I like bands sometimes. But, like, if I could pick what Taylor Swift does, it would be her and her acoustic guitar. Because she, I, it's just, it's so much more personal. I always liked Dave at Live at Luther College more than any of the other albums. Because it was just him and Tim Reynolds, bare bones. But also, you don't have to pay a fucking band. All that money goes to you. Not that I'm thinking that way, but that is the nicest thing about being a comedian is that you don't have to give it to anyone unless you're a Sklar brother. <laughs> and you don't have to do sound checks. <laughs> I mean, I do sometimes, but yes, you're right. Sound well, that's because you are, sing. Yeah. Yes, but sound checks are annoying. I get into town, I can just go to sleep and then get to the show and just yeah. go right on. I always wonder about like you know so as a comedian you can constantly change your set and if you don't feel like doing one joke if you're on the mood for it but i feel like bands have to play the songs that everybody yes like went Which to hear nice and not nice because you always have something to fall back on you don't have to make new music if you were like there was this joke mm. i heard where someone said like hey i forget who told me this they were talking to the manager of ario speedwagon and they asked him like are they still like putting out new music? And he goes, we don't encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so nice. To not, I mean, I'm grateful that I, because I get, so, I'm ADD, I get so bored with stuff that I don't feel anymore. So it would be very hard for me to like, even songs that I didn't write that I was so into and was so into singing, I'm like, Anya, I don't want to sing that song today. Like, I'm not feeling it. I will not sing it. Like, there's no way. So it would be hard to like do that. But, um, but there, it, it, 
last night I would have 100 percent blown off this show and canceled 100 percent. No question if I was just doing stand up because I didn't need it. I did stand up all weekend, but because I was singing a song, I would have paid to do the show. It was so <laughs> fun. It's the best feeling I can achieve in my life right now is performing on stage with a full band where I get to play guitar really shittily. It's the best feeling. I'm so and grateful you get to that cover I Nirvana it. with Bill Burr. That's so yeah, that's fun. really cool. Yeah, that I was wish I could have seen awesome. that. That's so even great. though I had to look at my phone the whole time because I couldn't didn't know the <laughs> lyrics, but I wish I would have learned them before. Yeah, it was really fun. All right, that's our show today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Anya. Thank you Noah for being here. Thank you to iHeart uh, Podcast for allowing us to be in this dope ass studio. So, what did you just say? Big money players, yes, especially our our uh, little sect of the iHeartRadio podcasting. It's our network. All, all the best podcasts at iHeart. No offense to the other ones are at Big Money Players. They're the funniest <laughs> and the coolest. Um, so uh, make sure you check those out. Stradio Lab. Uh, Poog. It's uh, what is it? Stradio Lab. Stradio Lab. Oh, there's a new one. Um, I which I used to do. It was Vanessa Bayer's new one. What is that called? Oh yeah. How, what was it? How do we get weird? How do we get weird? Oh, that's good. I just saw a clip with Will Ferrell where she's talking about, oh my God, that was the funniest damn clip. We'll repost it on our socials. But it, she was talking about um, an odd, or a, a job interview she went on where she came in prepared with her biggest weakness because she knew that was going to be a job interview question. <laughs> and then they didn't ask it. So at the end, when she nearly, she had gotten the job and they were like saying goodbye. <laughs> she was like, I just want to say my biggest weakness. <laughs> <laughs> I was cr- I was crying laughing. It's so good. So check out that Vanessa Bears podcast along with all the Big Money Players uh, podcasts that we are so happy to be a part of that network. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow on the show. Also, dates coming up. Durham, Greensboro, and what's the other? Oh, wait, wait. Durham, Greensboro, and Charleston. Charleston, yes. Oh, we're yes. on a Southern tour this week. And let me just say, besties, if you're in the South, please come out to these shows because your girl has never really played the South. And if there aren't anyone at these shows, I literally won't come back to these towns because my agents, people always go, how, why do you go on this, this place? Why do you go to this place? I don't choose. My agents choose based on the demand. And if we learn on this tour that there isn't demand there, I'm never going to come back and it won't be my fault. I won't know. I, there, I will have no control over it. So please, every single ticket matters to me. That, uh, and I'm not asking you just to like do this for me. Like I want to, I want to come back there. Because I like playing in the South. I like the people. So um, make a difference by buying a ticket to one of my shows. And, you know, as always, you get a free meet and greet if you're a bestie. Just come up to the merch booth and tell them that you're a bestie. And, and we'll find a way to get you a meet and greet. Or write me on DM or um, through Nikki Glazer Pod DM your full name, the show you're going to, and say you're going alone. Or that you're just a bestie. You can go with someone and get meet and greet, too. And I can't wait to meet you. I'll see you out there. Um, don't be cool. And just research yeah. before you get your veneers. <laughs> <laughs>